in the corner. And there we go. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. The August 14th, 2023 Stone Mills Council meeting is now in session. We have no three minute delegations. Can I get approval of the agenda, please? Wenda and Wendy, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Any conflicts of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? None declared. We have a couple of minutes to approve. The first one is the minutes of our July 17th public meeting, the zoning bylaw amendment meeting. Can I get approval? Yes. Um, yeah. Take note of that, Jason. No, no, thanks. Okay, thanks, Wenda. So, uh, can I get approval of the minutes of the uh, July 17th meeting? Doug and Sherry, any discussion? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. And the minutes from our, our uh, regular council meeting from July 17th, can I get approval of those? Crystal Lee, seconder, Wendy, any discussion there? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Delegations, does someone want to? Grab Mickey there. Hi, Mickey. Just grab a seat at one of those microphones. You press the the silver button and the red light will come on and, and that means that it's working. And and the floor is yours. Uh, Mickey wants to talk to us about access to the water in Cobra. Yeah. Uh, Just, yeah, I think everyone's got it on their, uh, their agenda. Oh. So, um, How about that? There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah? Okay. Councillors, thank you for having me. The Napanee River is such a wonderful resource for our community. For generations, family, and especially kids have been coming to this spot in Colebrook to swim, fish, and jump off the bridge. I swim every day in the river um, in the summer as long as the weather allows. I need to use a ski pole to manage the steep way down to the water. The other day I saw a girl of about 11, maybe 12, descend on her hands and knees. I've seen it get worse with each season. I don't know if this is true, but it was suggested that neglecting the path to the river may be a willingness to discourage swimming with the thinking that it protects the township from liability. Now, I don't know about liability, but in terms of discouragements, you only have to look at the metal fence that was installed a few years ago on the west side of the dam to discourage kids from walking along the dam. It didn't stop them at all. Kids will always find a way, you know, they always do. The way it stands now, the steep precarious path down to the river, I believe does pose, does pose a risk. I think that we in Stone Mills are so lucky to have this beautiful river to enjoy in our midst making it easier and safer to access by installing some really nice natural looking limestone steps, I believe would be a very worthwhile addition to our community. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Mickey. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. I'm assuming that this space, I, and by the photo, it's a little hard to tell. This is at the playground, right? By it's the, right at the playground, exactly. Where it used to be back when I was young and I swam there a lot, Yeah. you know? It was all wooden. Um, oh, it, it was. was eh? It was like railway tie type things to keep erosion at bay and so on. Is that well, there, true? a few years ago, there was one left, one tie left. And I remember I was there at the time when a family came. They had a big dog. They tied their dog to that and it was pulled away. Uh, but it was already eroding at that point. Um, 
So I don't know. I just thought limestone steps would look nice, and but you know, something so that it made it would be easier to access and something that would last. You know, like like some stone steps. Does that seem unreasonable or? Well, Doug, yeah, Mickey, what you're asking for, I agree. It sounds very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we don't own the property. Well, this is what it's I heard. I heard that you've taken it over again, haven't you? No, we no. haven't taken it over. It's conservationary property, and so we would have to work with them. Right. Now, um, when I first got your letter, I racked my brain. I've been around a couple of years, so I'm a little bit longer in the tooth. Right. I thought somewhere back in the 80s that we did put some steps in, but I can't get any verification of that, that yeah. we did. But that's... Uh, in the 80s, it was Camden East Township, not Stone Mills Township, in respects to this particular piece of property. Um, yeah, I realize it's always been a, a difficulty to, it's, because if you call them about other issues that I have, they say that it's a township, and then I call the township and they say, no, yeah. it's Quinty Conservation. We have the playground in there. It's, uh, the you have playground the playground equipment yeah. is ours through a joint agreement. You know? Yeah. And so I don't know what we do there. You know? Yeah. So is it, would it be reasonable for me to send this letter along with the photograph to someone there? If you would be able to direct me, I'd be happy to do that. I don't think you should have to do that, Mickey. No. Um, we can certainly advocate for you with the Conservation Authority because okay. we're members. Right. Um, Jason, what is our current um, arrangement with Quinty, to your, your knowledge, um, would this be something uh, we could do and uh, share costs or where do we stand in this situation? Yeah, thank you, Reeve Weiss. Uh, it's a great question. We, as uh, Deputy Reeve Davison mentioned, we have a memorandum of understanding with the conservation authorities yes. with respect to use of this land because we don't own the parcel, but we maintain all the infrastructure on, on the lands. Um, I don't want to commit to the costing or any of that sort at this point, but what I can say is staff can make sure that that dialogue is open between municipality and community conservation authority, given the usage and the, and the concerns that we have from health safety yeah. um, to see what the level of interest is uh, and then come back with some options uh, to, to counsel from, from that outlet. It sounds like a plan. So Chris Lee. I was just going to say, I'd make a motion that we, have we Jason do that. Reach Go out ahead. And make, make a motion. <laughs> we reach out to Quincy Conservation and do exactly that because obviously yeah. we have to work with them in partnership. And I think everyone here looking at this photo it does not look good. I definitely swam there as a kid lots you of did, times, yeah. which you know is easier when you're little to of get course. up and down that hill. <laughs> but you know what? I've mentioned it to, to a couple of kids when I was there, some young kids, probably about seven or eight, and they said, That would be awesome. You know, mm -hmm. so they're all for it too. You know? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Monday. I'm totally happy to hear that we're going to be working with the uh, Quinney Conservation Authority to try and make this way better than what it is. Yeah. My question now, though, is now that it's been identified and it looks to me to be a risk, um, are, do we not have an obligation of some kind to um, take steps to make sure that nothing bad happens between now and the time that it gets rectified? Well, I guess the question is, do we have that obligation or does Quinty? So Correct. jointly, I, th I think there is an obligation. Um, so what so do we do? I, I think that? the best thing to do is, is, is have Jason get in touch with Brad in the next day or two, say, how do you want to proceed in terms of immediate liability? And how do we want to proceed in, in terms of rectification? Sherry, go ahead. I was just going to mention, correct me if I'm wrong, but does it, are there signs there that say, say no swimming? No. No, I've never seen a sign that's saying no swimming. There is on the west side of the dam, there's some, you know, on Wessendorf's property, the, there's some danger signs. There's also a danger sign so anyone approaching um, realizes that there's a dam there, you know, if you're approaching in a boat. But there is a, a sign and a gate on the west side of that dam, but the kids still climb up and jump off into the water, right? Um, but there's, I've never seen a sign that say no swimming. Okay. And even if there were, that's what, that's not going to stop anyone. People have been swimming there for generations, right? And it's a wonderful, I so enjoy it. I swim every day under the bridge and I swim north and it's my exercise and it's so beautiful. You know, it really is. Okay. We have a motion to, uh, 
to identify this from Chris to Lee. Did I get a seconder? I will. Doug, Doug second. Can, yeah, can I comment? Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, just one more further comment. Yeah. We used to put sand there. Yeah, I've the heard about bed, that, yeah. And we were forced to stop by the right. Ministry of Environment. I've heard so of that, yeah. it, Things yeah. don't always go just as easy as yeah. sometimes I understand. Is, but we were, they were, we were starting to build a nice little shallow area at the bottom for smaller children. Oh, yeah, As yeah. the sand kind of got worked its way down yeah. the hill. They were worried about microbes yeah. and, and stuff uh, in the Unfortunately, sand. I mean, we had to stop. So, yeah. uh, uh, and that made it a lot softer and, you know, from that, and a little beach area at the bottom. Yeah. But so. It's not really maintained very well. I mean, we do it ourselves with a rake because there's always yeah. weeds in at the beginning of the season, right? Um but I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out how much involved. See where we go. Yeah. And do you agree that the limestone steps would be the way to go, or is there some other thing? Or we'll we'll yeah. explore the options. Yeah. 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 It'll be a matter of cost. It's something that looks natural, obviously, yeah. that fits in with the environment. Yeah, that might work. Anything else from anyone? All in favor? That's carried. Thanks very much. Mickey. That's great. That's great. Thank you guys very much, and I'm sure you have other things to deal with. So I'll be on my way. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Bylaws and resolutions. 6A is a bylaw to appoint a deputy treasurer for the township of Stone Mills. And uh, I need a motion that bylaw 2023 to be numbered, being a bylaw to appoint Brooklyn Winter to the position of deputy treasurer, be read for a second and third time and passed today. I get a motion, Sherry and Rob. Any discussion? Jason, do you want to just elaborate for the vast TV audience why this is necessary after Brooklyn's already been working for us for years? <laughs> Thank you, Reefwise. Yeah, uh, this is essentially a housekeeping item. Uh, there was there was an, uh, a bylaw that was not passed at the time of the hiring and promotion of Brooklyn to the deputy treasurer title uh, and position, and we had recently uh, changed our treasury staff and appointed a Re Anita Raymond to our uh, treasury position and had became aware of this absent bylaw. So we're here before you bringing that into compliance with the Municipal Act. Okay, did I get a move for a second? I did, I thought I did. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, item B is the Community Improvement Plan and that Council accept the report entitled Community Improvement Plan and further that bylaw 2023 to be numbered, being a bylaw to designate a community improvement project area for the corporation of the township of stone mills be read at first second and third time this day can i get a mover and seconder for this sherry and crystal lee jason thank you reeve Weiss. um we at this table have spoke previously with respect to the benefits of community improvement plans um one in the fact that it allows to ability to foster uh, industrial and commercial developments, uh, the hope thereof in our municipality um, by essentially offering financial incentives. It's one of the only mechanisms under the Planning Act and Municipal Act that allows us to do so. And this uh, essentially uh, is what staff are, are, are embarking on uh, with respect to our community. Um, as the bylaw defines before you this evening, we're hoping to designate the entirety of the township to be subject to a future community improvement plan so that it wouldn't restrict access or future developments to any given geographic location within our jurisdiction. And it would allow us to make considerations through future background studies and actual policy in a community improvement plan that could potentially promote and bring development to our jurisdiction. Um, so this is the first step as a municipality that we're required to do legislatively in bringing a CIP forward. And that's designated what area we're proposing to have that applicable to. Um, so uh, into the future, this fall, potentially new year, we would work to hold public open houses, community workshops, um, council meetings, et cetera, with respect to what a community improvement plan may look like. Um, as I mentioned, this is the first step and I'm hope that uh, council uh, respects what we're attempting to do in term, at staff level and attempting to bring and foster economic development in our community. Thanks, Jason. Any discussion? Wenda. Uh, I just wanted to make a motion. 
Uh, I got a mover and seconder already. Oh. Sherry and Crystal Lee. Thanks. Anyway, Wenda, uh, Wendy. So is this going to mean um, there'll be a smaller committee um, with staff and council on it that is involved in this and going out to the community or is like how how are we part of this or just are we directed through you reeve weiss uh, that's a great question councillor mcdonald i've not yet determined the best approach and i say that i say that truthfully because we're working in partnership with the county um as you may be aware, the County of lennox Nattington recently brought on a, pl a planner position. Um, so Anna Galetti is the planner, the newest planning staff at to the county under the director of Stephen Paul. Um, and her and uh, in our office uh, have been working in partnership on that and how we go out as a community, uh, bring a subcommittee, a technical working group, members of staff and members of council or members of the community that make up, I'm not, I'm not 100% confident on, um, but but it will most definitely involve public open houses um, that members of council and or a working group would, would be able to participate at. Any other questions or comments on this? All in favor then? That's carried, thank you. So on to staff reports. The first one we have here is a Request for proposals for development charges study and bylaw. The motion would be that council accept the report and that council proceed with DFA Infrastructure International Incorporated to complete the development charges background study in the amount of $21,600, excluding HST. I get a mover and seconder for that to open discussion. Wenda, you can second her for that. Oh, sorry, Wendy. <laughs> Didn't look all the way around. Wenda and Wendy. Uh, Jason, go ahead. Thank you, Reeve Weiss. Um, this, uh, I, uh, the background report that's prepared for council, I believe is fairly comprehensive in uh, assessing the two submissions that uh, the township is in receipt um, regarding the RFP process for the development charge background study, Watson and Associates, as well as uh, DFA Infrastructure International submitted the two, uh, made two submissions for our consideration and the uh, a matri the valuation matrix that was used to evaluate is included within and we as staff wish to pursue um, utilizing DFA Infrastructure and we feel that uh, through comments that we receive through reference checks. Um, they have the expertise in-house to complete what we're seeking with respect to a background study uh, for the potential adoption of development charges in our community. Happy to answer any questions. Any discussion? Wenda, go ahead. Um, Jason, can you just remind me? Oh, I'm in brain fog here today. <laughs> Um, can you just remind us uh, where this uh, money would be taken from, from our budget? Yes, through you, Reeve Wise, I may have to seek the assistance of Treasurer Raymond. I don't recall the exact line item. However, within the 2023 budget, I know we budgeted 20000 for the work of the background study with the consultant. Um, the specific line item, I don't recall off the top of my head. I could get back to you or I could uh, look behind you and see if we, nope, I'll have to get back to you. Okay, any further comments or questions on this item? All in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, the next item under this section is the British Home Child Awareness Update. We discussed this at a previous meeting. Um, the motion is that council receive the British Home Child Awareness Update and further that council provide staff with direction in promoting and possibly purchasing a flag for British Home Child Awareness Day. Jason, did you want to elaborate? Sorry, I need a mover and seconder. <laughs> Rob and Doug, thank you. Just keep me in line. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks, Revise. Yeah, I believe it was at our July 17th meeting. Um, we had good discussion respecting the British Home Child Awareness Day and 
council had directed staff to report back at a subsequent meeting with some options as it relates to what we as a municipality may do to recognize the importance um, of, of this day. Um, staff have taken away that uh, directive and essentially come up with a, a first was a review as to what we've done in the past because this isn't a new thing. We want to understand <laughs> Are we acting completely contrary to what was done in previous year, or are we consistent with what we're going to recommend? Um, and we understood that there was uh, expression written on township social media posting uh, to the extent of what we have included within this package, and uh, that was the, the extent of what was done previous years. What we're proposing is that we had purchased a flag um, that would be consistent with our township flag policy, uh, run the flag for the month of September uh, and or a shorter period should be that directive of, of council, um, but more so than a day. Um, and also make notice on our township social media platform and our website with the draft language or similar to that that we have provided before you on the agenda. Happy to answer any questions. Any discussion? Yes, Rob. <clears throat> I'd recommend that maybe we think about a two week period where the date, the day falls in the middle on say the eighth day. So like that's just a bit of a lead up, maybe start some conversation in the community about it. And then after that, that's a suggestion. Anything further? Yes, Wenda. The flags are really nice. Thank you for whoever did that. Um, I like the second one. I think it would be really easy to read. Uh, the the font is big, and the you know the um, the wording is easy to see if you're driving by looking at a flag. Um, they're both really nice, though. But I was drawn to the second one, I guess. Anyone else? So we do have to decide on which flag. Oh. So. I concur. I, I like the second one as well. It's just me. Okay. So is that a consensus? The second flag is the one to go with? And is it? <laughs> come on, dig in, Doug. <laughs> and, and what about uh, Rob's idea of two weeks as opposed to a month? Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Or? It does. Okay. Can that be included then in the, the motion, Jason? Okay, you got it. Further that, oh, sorry. Revise, uh, further that council direct staff to purchase flag option number two and, and post for a two week period with the, with the specific uh, British Home Child Day following in the middle of that period of time. Everyone happy with that? Very good, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Okay, Stone Mills Township accounts payable. July 23rd, I need a mover and seconder. Doug and Wenda, any discussion? All in favor, it's carried. And the second one under Anita's watch is township properties to be written off for 2023. I need a motion that council direct staff to write off property taxes for the municipal properties. And I'm not gonna read all those roll numbers. And I get a mover and seconder, Sherry and Wendy. Any discussion? This is something we do every year. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Item C under this section is Manager of Public Works and Emergency Services, Thompson. Uh, this is the repealing of the COVID-19 mandatory vaccination policy. And James, you're gonna speak to this. I need a motion that council receive the report about repealing it and further the township, the Stone Mills mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy be revealed. Doug and Sherry move. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Ruth Weiss. Um, so when we uh, put our uh, vaccination policy into place, um, it was consistent with many of the other municipalities in the area. Uh, last year, we um, discussed removing it. Uh, at that time, it was removed for all staff except for fire department staff. And then we agreed that it would be reviewed again um, this following year. So we're just back to review that and sort of say that um, in our guidance and understanding of everything that's going on, um, it's, it's no longer needed at this time. So um, that's about it. Any comments or questions? 
questions for James? James, is this something that's happening in many fire departments at this point, do you know? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I haven't heard specifically of other ones in the area, but it's consistent with all industries across the, the country, in, including emergency services. I think we're at, at that point. Uh, I read something today that 75% of people have COVID antibodies in their system already. So hopefully that's going to protect us and it's just another flu. All in favor of that? change thank you and we've got another item are you, you going to address the uh, truck chassis one james yeah so just a quick okay, update i'll uh, just get a move oh sorry yes so i need uh, the council receive your report and the council approve the purchase of the quick response truck chassis for 79 890 plus hsp from braden ford doug and sherry go ahead james Thank you, Revive. So, sorry. Um, so just a quick update. Last time I was here, um, we came to you with a plan to build uh, the new quick response rescue in-house. Um, that plan was approved. Um, so we've since went ahead with the purchase, the sole sourcing purchase of the body and the tendering of the truck chassis has now been completed with James Braden Ford being the successful bidder on that. So we're just I inform you of the, the results of that tender and uh, hoping to move ahead with the purchase. Any questions for James on that? Who was the other uh, bidder on that one, James? Uh, Pringles Ford and Apple. Okay. All right. That's great. All in favor? Good. Great. Thanks, Thanks very James. much. And item D on staff reports is Chief Building Official Detler regarding the Beaver Lake Swim Program update. <coughs> and I need a motion to receive Jake's report. Crystal Lee and Wendy. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, I just reading this uh, before I went on, I just was recalling uh, back in around 2014, KFLNA had kind of a unique program where a lot of recreation and different municipal staff would get together with a lot of other uh, uh, entities like the YMCA and stuff. And uh, just talking about how to improve uh, it was kind of a pilot program they had. It was really unique and really positive. Um, you know, we just sit around and talk about how to improve, uh, you know, and involve uh, new strategies in the community. And I remember at the time, not really knowing too, too much about this, um, what was going on. That I heard a lot of communities complaining about trying to find staff for their lifeguarding programs or their um, swimming instruction programs and how it was a real headache for a lot of municipalities. And I, I, I just... I think at that time, Barb Croning was running it and we had a kind of small program going on. Um, but yeah, since then, um, definitely it's a problem. It's just spiraled out of control to the point where, um, you know, they're the, among, they're kind of like almost as needed as nurses almost uh, and just uh, really sought after. And uh, every year it seems to be getting worse that you, 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 you signing bonuses and we're all trying to fight over a limited pool of people who are qualified for pool instruction and or swimming instruction and uh yeah it's every year and we're we're a part of this and we're probably pretty lucky that we've managed to have some sort of some sort of program one thing that i failed to mention in this was that uh when they switched over from red cross to the new royal life saving of canada program um they're, they're more inclusive uh so there's like uh like infants, young toddlers, and adults, uh, you know, times for instruction each day. Um, so, which is, I think, a positive thing. It, it definitely, I think, boosted uh, the numbers in terms of the amount of people, um, 263 people getting, uh, participants getting, you know, instruction on how to better improve their swimming um, is a real positive for the community. And uh, this is something, dating back that probably is one of the most important things that we do and even though we're not really heading the program we kind of do support it and it's it's uh one of the more important things to have in your community and i, I actually think we're the only kind of swim instruction program in the county uh, because it's really become a limited thing and uh you know there's other municipalities anymore that that would love to do pool instruction or, or swim instruction that's can't have the programs they don't have the staff so yeah just uh 